During the Cold War, the various nations of the world were locked into a nuclear arms race, constantly developing new systems that were capable of launching a nuclear ordnance at the enemy. A variety of options were considered for the delivery of a nuclear device was investigated. The main one being the use of an aircraft um, to deliver a nuclear bomb as demonstrated by the bombings of, of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Another way of delivery was the use of a rocket or missile. But during the late 1940s to early 50s, whilst rockets were still being developed, they weren't as reliable and often quite expensive. Plus, most nations had not really experimented with the use of large, long-range rockets, and so most of the technology was still in its infancy. This, however, would quickly change by the late 1950s and early 60s. The other option was to use a proven method of delivering an ordnance across long range, the artillery which will culminate into several designs on both sides, but for today's video, I'm going to be talking about the 2B1 Orca, a Soviet 420mm self-propelled tactical nuclear mortar. But with that aside, let's now discuss on how this artillery piece came about. During the 1940s and 50s, with the success of the atomic bombs over Hiroshima and Nagasaki, most major powers and countries around the world were looking towards developing more means of delivering nuclear arms via other means. One of the potential means of delivering nuclear ordnance was the use of a long-range artillery and mortar pieces. The Americans had started designs during 1949 on building a nuclear capable artillery piece, and in 1953, the Americans had made their first nuclear capable artillery, the M65 Atomic Cannon. Often referred to as Atomic Army, during the same year, on May the 25th of 1953, at 0830 hours, the Atomic Cannon was test fired with a nuclear shell that had a nuclear warhead with the yield of 15 kilotons. This would be the first and only nuclear shell to be fired from a cannon. It wasn't clear when the Soviets heard about the Americans making a nuclear cable artillery, but during 1955, the Council of Ministers of the Soviet Union issued out a secret decree to create two new types of artillery that would be capable in delivering a nuclear shell. Both of these designs were assigned to the Kolomna and Kirov machine building plants. These two artillery would be later known as the Condensator 2P, which was made by the Kolomna plant and the Object 273, better known as the 2B1 Orca mortar, which was deferred by the Kirov plant, of which four of them would be produced. The 2B1 Orca, on merits of the extremely large gun calibre size, namely 420mm, and the resulting massive amount of recoil that the chassis would have to withstand from the Her Herculean forces that would be exerted from firing the gun. The decision was made to use a pre-existing chassis from the T-10 heavy tank that the Soviets had available. The T-10 turret would be completely removed in order to make way for the massive 420mm mortar gun barrel. But all other features of the T-10 would be retained. The weight of the complete vehicle would be around 55 tons. Powering the vehicle was a V12-6 diesel engine um, capable of outputting 750 horsepower. The top speed of the 2B1 Orca is unknown, but the operational range of the 2B1 Orca was around 125 kilometers. But considering the T10 
um, series operational range was rated at 250 kilometers and it was often remarked as sluggish in terms of its cruising speed with the extra weight of the gun it would it would be fair enough to say that the 2b1 orca wasn't very mobile at all but now onto the main subject of the video the gun the 2b1 orca's gun was as previously stated a 420 mm mortar with a barrel length of nearly 20 meters long the ammo it fired um, was a mortar weighing around 650 to 750 kilograms information about the mortar weight isn't exact but the rough weight of the mortar shows that the rounds couldn't be loaded manually and so a crane would have to be used to assist in the loading of the gun. During the firing tests the gun would reload one round every five minutes which is very sluggish for an artillery piece and the claimed range of the gun was around 45 kilometers. However the rate of fire wouldn't be the main problem of the gun. Due to the massive amount of recoil from the 420mm gun, the T10 chassis was built to withstand the extreme amount of force and was reinforced with additional partial shock absorbers that was installed into the tank. The amount of recoil from the 420mm firing would be too much for the chassis. The force was so great that it pushed the SPG back by about 5 meters. Ordinarily, most artillery of a large caliber would have anti-recoil spades that would dig into the ground, preventing the artillery piece from moving back. But these weren't present on the 2B1 Orca, which I hazard to guess that the spades would just be damaged by the sheer force of the recoil. But the problems when the gun fired didn't end there. The chassis after firing would have to be inspected to make sure that nothing was broken. Often dry sprockets and the gearbox would be the main areas of damage from the recoil. The 2B1 Orca gun was unveiled to the world during the 1957 anniversary of the October Revolution on Red Square after passing all of the tests. The reaction from the outside world was mixed, with some journalists at the time making assumptions that this new SPG was nothing more than a propaganda piece for the Soviets. However, the SPG would be continuously tested for the next two years, where the system was improved to lessen the damaging effects of the recall, but the project would be ultimately cancelled during 1960s for numerous of reasons. The first reason was due to the rather large size of the artery piece, it would make it impossible to travel through narrow streets and towns as well as villages. And off-road travelling would be um, out of the question due to the weight of the vehicle, making it impossible to pass through certain terrain. Another problem with most large caliber artillery pieces, such as the 2B1 Orca, is that it takes time to set up the gun for firing. And this problem was also present on the Condensator 2P. But the main reason why the 2B1 Orca was cancelled was that artillery pieces were often too complex to manufacture in good quantities. And with the leaps and bounds being made in missile technology, especially within the realms of guided missiles to deliver a nuclear warhead, was deemed far more efficient and often more accurate than conventional artillery pieces. Plus, you weren't limited by any size restrictions that would normally be imposed on a round fired from a mortar in regards to the nuclear payload. Even the relatively early missiles such as the R11, which had a range of 270 kilometers, albeit a reduced range of 170 kilometers when it was carrying a nuclear warhead, 
and the R12 ICBM, which had a claimed um, 2,000 to 2,500 kilometers, which outranged the 2B1 Orca's relatively pitiful 45 kilometer shell limit by um, by a absurd amount. After the cancellation of the project, the four prototypes was eventually withdrawn from service. Uh, it's not clear what happened to three of the four SPGs produced, but one of them right now is located at an artillery museum in the city of St. Petersburg, where it re remains on public display. Thanks for watching, I hope to see you in the next one.